Hello, good evening, everybody. My name is Ed Bailden. I'm the Chief Inspector for the Northwest BCU. With me this evening is uh, Councillor Assad. Hello, everyone. Um, so we are live. Sorry, I was waiting. I thought that uh, we, we, we hadn't gone live yet. So um, thank you for joining us this evening for our Catalytic Converter Theft webinar. Uh, my name is Pimona Assad, and I'm the Cabinet Member for Community Cohesion, Crime and Enforcement. And I'm joined by Chief Inspector Ed Belden of the Northwest Metropolitan Police, who's just introduced himself. Um, this evening, we'll be speaking to you about what you can do to keep yourselves and your family is safe from catalytic converter thefts and what actions the council and the police are taking together because I know this is a huge issue in the borough and it's one that's very traumatizing to the people of Harrow and you guys are very fed up so um, what Ed's going to do is he's going to give us a presentation of about 10 minutes and then we'll open up to questions from the floor but before we do that I just wanted to really empathize with everyone in Harrow who has had their catalytic converters stolen a few weeks back, I was actually witness to some criminals driving down the road in my own ward in Roxeth off the estate in the Heights and steal not one, not two, but four catalytic converters. You know, the criminals were so confident that no screams of stop, what are you doing, deterred them, not filming, not taking their photos, nothing. And within a matter of seconds, they were gone uh, with the catalytic converter. But prior to this incident, I had received multiple questions from the public and also councillors about what the council is doing. So just as a reminder, and before Ed goes into his presentation, <clears throat> I just wanted to outline some of the top three things that the council have been doing to try and tackle this. So the first is that we have a really dedicated community safety unit that is led by really good officers, <clears throat> working with the police, with environmental health, with the council's CCTV operation, um, to work in a, this multi-agency working group to review these trends and sort of take action. So these are things like information drops, checks on scrap metal dealers um, and things like that. Second, we've joined up with the police and I'm sure Ed will go into this about vehicle marking events uh, where you can get your vehicle marked up to try and keep it safe. So, so far we've done it in Green Hill and Marlborough Wards and 100 150 vehicles have been marked up. The third thing is obviously community safety officers are attending all ward panel meetings to increase the awareness of catalytic converter thefts and provide assurance to residents. So these are the three top things that the council has been doing but I'm sure that, that Ed will provide us with more information about what the police um, has been doing to try and catch these criminals and to reassure residents in Harrow. So again, we'll take a 10 minute presentation from Chief Inspector Ed Belden, and then we'll open up to questions. So over to you, Ed. Thank you very much, Councillor. Uh, so Helen, I believe you're still there. Could you please bring up the presentation, the PowerPoint presentation? Just bringing it up now for you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, what I think it would be useful to start with uh, at the beginning of this is to just frame the conversation of what we're looking at, what we mean by uh, catalytic converter thefts, and then also look at some of the prevention techniques and how we're going to try and solve this. Signs of what's um, what to look out for in regards to when a catalytic converter is being stolen, either uh, your own or maybe somebody else's within the community. And then also look at some of the figures in regards to how this is affecting the community of Harrow. So first of all, what is a catalytic converter? That is a device that is fitted to a vehicle that is there to uh, filter exhaust fumes, reducing dangerous gases which are emitted out into the um, environs. Why are they being stolen? Well, inside the catalytic converter is a number of precious metals, which are then valuable to the thieves, who can then sit, take this to cash converters, scrap yards, places where they're or even online and ship them out across the country, or out of the country, where they'll then be able to get um, money for that. Uh, where they usually try and target would be, sometimes they target people on their own driveways, but also when they are parked for a long time in regards to car parks, public spaces, um, and we will cover in a while which vehicles are mostly at risk uh, through our figures and also at what times of day that they were being targeted and what day of the week's being targeted. So also hybrid vehicles are one of the most commonly targeted as their metals are more valuable. Next screen please. Helen. Thank you. So the signs that a catalytic converter theft is being committed. So you may see a vehicle being raised using a car jack in a car park or residential area. I would suggest that these people would not be the ones that you'd expect, such as maybe a 
AA, RAC or any other uh, motor technicians. It would be people who are driving around in a nondescript vehicle, not necessarily a van, just a, a car. Uh, and they might just look like the normal members of the public who are doing that. You'd hear loud drilling or cutting. And one of the main problems with this type of theft is that it can literally take between one and two minutes. I was speaking to a colleague earlier on today who has been a victim of this themselves on their own driveway, where they have uh, watched them on a CCTV afterwards. And from start to finish, from the person getting onto the driveway, jacking up the car and then being off with their catalytic converter, just over 30 seconds. So it's very, very quick. There's very little human interaction because uh, they're there for so little time. So it's quite hard to commit to catch them whilst they're committing these, vehicles, these crimes. Next screen, please, Helen. What vehicles are most likely to be targeted? As mentioned already, hybrid vehicles. Uh, the metals that are in there are worth more to the thieves and making them more attractive. Uh, as I mentioned there, also diesel vehicles are being targeted as well because the filter system on there uh, is often being sold off at scrapped um, metal dealers. The vehicles that are currently being targeted uh, are BMWs, Hondas, Toyotas and Lexuses. Um, I'm afraid I'm not a technical person, so I'm not able to tell you why they might be um, more appealing in regards to the metals inside or anything like that. It might just be that they happen to have a high number of vehicles in that area that are usually higher off the ground and easier accessible for the thief to take. Next screen, please. So prevention. How are we going to try and prevent you from becoming a, a victim of crime? So first of all, you'd be able to ask your car dealer for advice in regards to locks and guards. There are a number of systems out there um, which you can get boxes that will be fit over the, the catalytic converter to make it harder for them to be stolen. Also, we have a number of uh, vehicle marking schemes that's already been touched on by the council that's going across um, the northwest BCU, including Harrow, where we'll be able to mark the catalytic to converter and then at a later date, hopefully be able to trace that should we be able to uh, catch the people with that. Make sure that your vehicle's parked in a garage overnight. If you do not have one, then make sure that it's parked in a, a well-lit area. So this is crime prevention advice, not just for theft from uh, of catalytic converter, but also for theft from your vehicle. Uh, try to make sure that you have parts that the converter can be, can't be easily reached by potential thieves. How that could be done is by park, making sure that you park close to a wall to be able to prevent it from being lifted on one particular side, uh, just making it as hard as possible in order to try and prevent your vehicle from becoming uh, used for crime. Make sure that your con catalytic converter is also registered and mark it with the forensic marker that we've discussed earlier on. Um, one of my officers is currently looking at how we can train our officers up to be able to uh, deliver these uh, marking schemes rather than having to rely on outside agencies such as RAC, AA and HiQ to be able to do that. So then we can run more of these and to try and get this, this out and about in the public with larger numbers. Next screen, please. How you can help us. So suspects normally target vehicles across a number of boroughs in a very short amount of time. We'll look at uh, some of the crime stats in a second, but I've also got it for the whole of Northwest BCU where you can see um, certain uh, parts north of the, the BCU are being targeted a little bit more than elsewhere, but from what we've seen over a night where we have been hit is that they can, you can follow the crime, crime strands off into other boroughs as well, where they're going along a particular pattern or route. Uh, providing a good description of the vehicle or the vehicle being used by the suspects as well to us will help us, as, will, as it would with any crime. If you saw it, please don't challenge them and put yourself on offer. Phone 999 and let us come and do the work in regards to that. Should you be informed of regards to anybody who is acting suspiciously in your area or anybody who you think might be involved in this sort of crime, then not just ringing 101 or 999, but there's also crime stoppers that you'd be able to phone to then be able to report on them anonymously. Next screen. Gone backwards there, Helen. Some of the operations that we've had uh, taking place over the, the last few weeks and months, uh, we've been contacting the scrap metal uh, merchants. Please excuse the spelling mistake in the scrap metal there. I've just noticed that myself in my own presentation. 
uh, scrap metal merchants to make it uh, more difficult to sell the catalytic converters. If we can take out this level of where these um, items are being sold, then we make it a much less profitable area for the people to um, thieve. We're setting up property marking schemes, as already mentioned. These will be advertised both on our Twitter pages and also on the SNT web page. But also, we will look to try and get them out and about on uh, in the public domain so people can hear it, uh, see it. Should I say? Uh, we're carrying out over patrols in identified areas of uh, high crime to deter thieves. So, one of the information slides, which I'll be showing you shortly, shortly, will show uh, various areas where we've been hit for a number of these. And uh, with intelligence-led policing, we will be using that to define where we're going to be putting officers in and around that area to make sure that we are making most of their officers' time. And we're also trying to contact all owners of vulnerable vehicles to provide uh, direct crime prevention advice. So particularly in these high-hit areas, we will look to try and identify people who are driving vehicles that are uh, mainly being uh, hit by these thieves and to try and pass on crime prevention advice to them there. Next slide, please. So I'm not really going to talk in regards to this. I'll just leave that screen on there for a few, uh, a few moments, and then people might be able to make a note in regards to where they can get further information on how to prevent catalytic converter crime. I will make sure that we pass that on to um, the communications teams as well to try and put out there on the, the council webpage for your later use. Okay, if we could move on a couple of slides, please, Howard. So uh, I mentioned in regards to some of the crime figures uh, to have a look at of how uh, catalytic converter thefts are affecting Harrow uh, and also Northwest BCU. Next slide, please, Howard. So this is a, the monthly figures, which is for the Northwest BCU. Uh, so you can see on there that we're currently slightly risen in regards to uh, December, but based on on six months um, figures going back to the summer months, that's when we were mainly hit. Uh, we have brought that down slightly. Currently at around about 147. Our peak crimes were around about 234, which was May in 2021. So with that, we will be looking back, not just at the last 12 months, but also two and three year crime trends due to the fact that it has been skewed over the, the uh, COVID period to see which months are going to be hit and that's when it's going to be the most beneficial time for us to be doing a lot of our overt policing. Next slide please. Anna. So breaking it down from the northwest BCU, so the last one was for both uh, Harrow, Brent and Barnet, we can see the effect of, um, of Harrow. So again it follows a similar trend with May being the hardest hit area of when we were last um, last peak. We're currently going up from November through to January, which is one of the reasons why we're here today to discuss what we're doing around that and hopefully try and reassure you in regards to some of the work that we're doing. Uh, October and September were particularly low months, not just for Harrow, but also for the Northwest BCU. And if you look at the January figure, that's accounted for nearly a third of our thefts across Northwest. So if I can take, take us further out from both Northwest and Harrow there, looking at the, um, the MPS as a whole, the current hotspot areas for Catholic converter thefts is the Northwest BCU alongside West Area, West Area, which covers Hillingdon, Ealing and Hounslow. And we've been working quite a lot with our officers um, from across the border in the West Area in regards to trying to target this identifying that if we can try and solve it on our area, what we would do is just displace it into their area and vice versa. And therefore, if we can do a joint approach in regards to that, hopefully we can try and minimise it for all the community of London. Uh, very recently, there were three very significant arrests on West Area, which we saw had a direct effect in regards to crime on, um, on Harrow. And I'm hoping that that figure where we're seeing a rise into January will start to drop off going into February and March. If we go into the next slide, please. Hold. Over the last 28 days, for the whole of the Northwest, we can see the most vulnerable vehicle types. So on there, you will see that BMWs are currently uh, the highest hit uh, 
vehicle with 23 of the total numbers being from BMWs, and then followed by Honda, Lexus, and Toyota. And there's then quite a significant drop off before you see Volkswagen and Mercedes and various other vehicles on there. The type of vehicle that is mainly hit is a saloon with 44 of the, the total number, closely followed by hatchbacks. I say closely, that's actually significant, but significantly less by hatchbacks. The average number of offences that we get each day is around about three or four cath specifically catalytic converter offences. Next slide, Helen, which I believe will bring it into Harrow perspective. Thank you very much. We can see that it's um, a very similar image for just Harrow alone, with BMWs, Hondas and Lexus taking up the vast majority of the, uh, the offences taking place, and again, saloons. Of the 43 incidents in the last 28 days, including Queensbury, Brent and Edgware Barnet, this gives an average of just over between one and two offences per day in Harrow. Yes, we do see specific days which are uh, higher hit, but over, over the average, it's one or two offences a day. Next slide, please. So this slide here is looking at what the, the peak offence time is taking place. So as you can see, the, uh, around about eight o'clock is where it peaks going in towards 10 o'clock. So we're looking very much at this time of year at the hours of darkness uh, with lesser offences taking place during the day. However, around about midday, uh, 11 o'clock, we do see a peak. Uh, that could be due to the fact that at that time, you can guarantee that a car that is parked in a car park might have been there for a number of hours. Somebody's at work, so they might be targeting that particular time. And then at night time is a time when people are parked on their driveways. Uh, and it's when cars are at home and they'll be able to be easily accessible. This is for the whole of the Northwest. Moving on to the next slide, it will bring it into the Harrow perspective, which we can see a similar trend at eight o'clock till 10 o'clock. And then also a little bit of a spike there earlier on in the day around about 11 to midday. Thank you, Helen. Last, can we go on to the last 28 days map? Thank you very much. So this map here is showing the, the whole of the Northwest, uh, including Harrow. And you can see that the number of offences, there are a couple of small areas or pockets where we see a number of about four or five crimes. Um, but there is a very varied spread across the whole of the, the Northwest region. And then if we move on to the next slide, it will bring it into a Harrow centric perspective. So as you can see there, there's a number of crimes up to the north of the borough, um, all around main arterial routes. This will uh, offer ease of ingress and access, uh, exit for the uh, officers, or for the officers, for the suspects, should I say, get my, my teeth in properly. Uh, that means that they're going along those routes, going out towards the M1, easily out of um, the Metropolitan Police District, or just easy for them just to jump on and off and not be, not be noticed driving around residential areas in the hours of darkness as easily. We can move on to the next slide then, please. A number of things that we've been doing over the, the last few weeks has been mentioned property marking. We've given out uh, 225 property marking kits for catalytic converters so far, and we're planning on doing some more of these events over the coming weeks and months, uh, both on uh, Harrow, Barnet and Brent. And as mentioned, we're trying to uh, identify the owners of vulnerable vehicles through DVLA, DVLA checks to identify where they live and pass on more uh, crime prevention advice. That is the end of my presentation. Uh, Councillor, do you want it now to open it up for questions from uh, the viewers? Yes, but before we do that, I actually have a few questions of my own, um, because I understand the frustration of residents and the situation that they're going through. This is about the hard earned money of residents where they go and buy nice cars or cars that they need to do their jobs or to take their families places or to drop their kids to school and their catalytic converters are being stolen. And, and it's a very traumatic experience because 
these things are happening on people's driveways. These things are happening in broad daylight. And so the main question I had from all of this, the, the presentation was great. Thank you so much for, for sharing that with us and with, with residents. And the marking events, as I mentioned, is a joint effort by police and the council. And we've been advertising it on the council website. But the main question I have is, you know, there's three or four offenses a day in Harrow. The question is, have we caught any of these criminals? so far within harrow itself no anywhere else there have been uh, offenders caught uh, as mentioned over in west area which did have a uh, a positive effect in regards to crime rates on harrow's um, area so i'm not saying that we would be able to prove that they were the offenders however it um, i don't believe in coincidence that when somebody has been arrested and a crime goes down in a certain area then there's a reason why that's happened. Um, you mentioned this, yeah, on average, we're around about one and two offences that are occurring per day in Harrow. Uh, across the whole of the BCU, it's around about four to five offences. Uh, so, yes, I do understand that this is a concern for the residents of Harrow. Okay. And another question I had was, um, I know you mentioned that, you know, several times in the presentation that you're going to be contacting those who own um, cars that might be targeted and you're doing this through the DVLA but what kind of areas are we looking at in Harrow is this going to be in the entirety of the borough or is this going to be specific sections so yeah the, first of all we will be looking at those hotspot areas so as mentioned on there those arterial routes um, up at the north end of Harrow you can see a cluster of the offences taking place that's where my priority would be in regards to where we're going to have targeted patrols so around the Hatch End and Harrow Weald area to start with um, however all of my officers across the northwest will be out there looking for um, potential uh, victims of this crime where we can identify them and then be able to pass on that um, information to them to try and try and prevent it now let's be clear with this we are not going to be able to police our way out of this problem um, through just patrolling alone and through percent, through marking, we're not going to be able to prevent that. We need to be able to speak to the producers of these vehicles, as we've seen back in the, the 90s uh, and 80s when your vehicles were being stolen, they came up with new locking systems. Um, it is going to be something that we would need to speak to the creators of the vehicles to then be able to come up with solutions to make this a less desirable way of uh, the thief making money. Okay. Thank you. Um, so now that I'm not going to ask any more questions, what I'm going to do is take some questions from the floor. I know lots of people have put their hands up, but please can you use the chat function? There is a chat function. If you put the Q&A, um, click on the Q&A thing and put your question in there, and then I can uh, come to that question. Um, there is one question at the top by Ralph. Can the police not set up a couple of cars as decoys to catch the thieves? So yeah, that is a, a tactical option that we could look to do. Um, I mean, when you look at the number of offences that are taking place and the, the staff, um, staff hours to put in place a decoy car, um, it might not be the most beneficial way of trying to solve this, but it is something that is an option to us. Okay. Um, we've got a question from someone in regards to the fact that uh, no man says that uh, residents are feeling powerless and are considering confronting these thieves themselves and I know you said in your presentation that people shouldn't be confronting them um, just to say you know when I was witness to that catalytic converter theft that happened in my own ward in Roxeth um, the residents whose car it was did approach them but they had like I don't know some kind of weapons in their hands and so they threatened the residents I as a counsellor would not recommend any resident trying to approach these kind of people because I saw that they are not scared and and they will hurt you so what's the official police advice on this similar to that my advice is not to confront these people do not put yourselves on offer um, gather as much information as you can safely whilst dialing 999 I appreciate we can't be there instantaneously unless we are lucky enough to be in that area. However, please give us a chance to get there by dialing 999, pass us as much information as possible. Keep yourself and your family safe at home. Um, 
let's put this in perspective. I appreciate that this is um, somebody's hard-earned cash, but this is a vehicle. This is an item. This is something that can be replaced. Your lives, your injuries cannot. Yeah, and I would echo that. Your life is more important. Um, Kino Patel asks, why are we not able to do proper detective work to catch these criminals? For example, C surveillance CCTV. Why is that not being looked at to track the criminals? Um, sorry, just to before Ed answers, one of the things that the council is doing is trying to invest more in CCTV cameras, um, but these CCTV cameras can only be used for, for specific purposes. So <clears throat> we will work with the police on where whether we can uh, give over evidence that is caught through CCTV to try and help track the criminals, but I am guessing that is much harder because you need to know exactly where the vehicles went. So Ed, what do you think about this one? Please don't think that we are not doing that. CCTV is a very key part of the investigation in regards to any of these or any other offences. It is a tool that is there for us and it is a tool that we use regularly as part of that investigation. Uh, so yes, that is, that is ongoing. Great. <clears throat> Jan says, <clears throat> every time I take my vehicle in for a service, which is Audi, I am told that they aren't able to security mark the catalytic converter. Wouldn't it help if vehicle manufacturers also had the ability to mark vehicles at the point of sale or servicing? Um, and so I guess the question really is, is the police doing anything with the vehicle manufacturers? I don't have the answer in regards to is anything being done with the, the vehicle manufacturers. It's something that I will feed into our, our central teams and see if it is being taken forward with us. Um, in regards to the vehicle marking, please get in touch with us. We will be able to do that. Uh, and we also do have discussions ongoing with local garages to see if we are able to try and um, train them up to know where to put the vehicle mark and get them the vehicle marking scheme out there. Okay, great. Yeah, I would really, I think what I'm pushing for also is to have more vehicle marking schemes. But um, uh, Terry asks we, that we didn't mention catalytic converters being fitted, cat locks fitted, sorry. So yeah, they're the cages that go around the cat, uh, catalytic converter, I do believe. Um, uh, it was something that I mentioned in there. The, yes, those are something that you could speak to the manufacturer or speak to uh, another person, the supplier in regards to that. That's not something that we offer, I'm afraid. Um, you know, you mentioned that there were boxes that could be fitted around. So that is a, a garage or a private service can do that for people, residents. I believe so. Yes, they would be able to advise you. I'm sure you'd be able to find some uh, service on the on the internet to be able to provide that. Yes, and and that actually stops them from taking the catalytic converter, or because I had, did hear a resident tell me that they did have this fitted and the catalytic converter was stolen. So, is there different types it's, that can be fitted? It's not a perfect system in that it won't stop it, but it will significantly slow it down. Okay. So it will make it a lot less appealing to uh, a thief. Okay. Um, Alan's question is very long, so I will come back to that. Um, Ian asks, what proportion of police officers in the BCU are dedicated to Harrow? Dedicated to Harrow itself. Uh, in regards to my, my teams, for safer neighbourhood teams, there is approximately 80 to 90 off the top of my head without actually doing the, the figures. You then have the response teams, which are work out of Wembley currently, and they cover not just uh, Wembley, but they cover the whole of Harrow and Wembley. The crime wing is split across Brent, Harrow and Barnet. So it's not a very specific answer to be able to say which one is specifically just dealing with Harrow. But for the Harrow SNT, it's between 80 to 90 officers. Okay, great. Um, <clears throat> Girish Patel asks, what is the plan to arrest these criminals? And I guess you've answered a little bit in previous answers, but maybe you want to just repeat some of the things that have already been said to start answering. So we are looking at proactive patrols in around the hotspot areas. We're also looking at a number of other tactics, which I'm not going to go into just on here because I don't want to, uh, to spoil any of the operations that are go ongoing. But we're also looking at um, the preventing this in the first place through uh, the vehicle marking schemes uh, through uh, highlighting this to people who may be vulnerable and to the general public to make to be mindful in regards to this type of crime taking place. In regards to specific investigations, obviously, I will be able to uh, to discuss that right now. Okay, I'm going to go back to Alan's question because I think it's um, quite good. He's put 
three in the in four in the chat box, but I'm going to take the fourth one. In terms of catalogs, I know um, the previous person asked about catalogs, and you just said that they delay the process and potentially could increase the time that it takes for them to take out the catalytic converter. So, if that was to happen and a resident had that fitted, would the police be able to attend in time if the call happens early? Is two minutes enough for you to come? Uh, I'm afraid I'm, that's uh, an almost impossible answer. It all depends on the circumstances, the time, uh, where the officer would be. Um, yeah, it's not something that I'd be able to e easily answer. Hopefully, yes, okay. in an ideal world it would be, but um, we could be there within second if we're just around the corner, but it could be that we're doing something else at the time and it might take a few minutes. I can't answer that for the individual case. Okay. And there's one question here that Alan also asks about personal protection. He's asking um, if people go and actually confront those who are doing this, um, do we do they risk prosecution if that if that if that if they cause them injury or knock down the car or trap them underneath or that kind of thing? That's something that would have to be looked at in an investigation. Okay. Um, there are other questions he's asked, but I, I believe you've covered some of the in terms of the use of technology. Um, and CCTV cameras. Um, the other question is, can we check all continents of containers that are coming in and out of the country? I guess that's more of a national police question rather than a local one. But do you have any information that could potentially be shared in answer to this question? I'm afraid of that. Okay, thank you. Um, Karen asks, what are the council doing um, in terms of assisting the police and can the council provide extra CCTV and better lighting? So as I outlined right at the start, you know, the three ways that the council is trying to work with the police in terms of through our multi-agency working group, through the vehicle marking events and through our ward panel meetings. Um, those are some of the ways that the council has already been working, but you raise a really good point in terms of CCTV and better lighting. So the council has actually invested in, in 15 extra CCTV cameras, which will hopefully be installed by the 31st of March. Um, and therefore we are also looking at better lighting across um, the borough too, to try and help um, people actually see um, better in, in the streets of Harrow. Um, so thank you, Karen, for, for your question. Um, and I guess, Ed, you can attest to the fact that the council and the police have been working together on some of this stuff. Yes, I have. Great. Um, uh, Kino asks a question about Facebook and the fact that Facebook can track faces. So why can the police not track the getaway vehicles on CCTV? Um, so bit in regards to Facebook, I mean, we don't have the technology in order to be able to track the, a vehicle like that. However, we do look for CCTV trolls, we look for the vehicle. One of the other problems is that they are often some vehicles that are being used by the suspects and being put on false plates. We do have a network of uh, AMPRs, automatic number plate read readers. Any vehicles that we do identify, the registration plate will be fed into that. And then we are highlighted in regards to should that vehicle trigger any uh, AMPRs across uh, in the northwest and hopefully we're then able to stop it <clears throat> okay um there's a really interesting question here from Anne. um she says her catalytic converter was stolen in november and the police were not interested when we when they reported it um they got an off a letter offering victim support but they were told that there's nothing that the police can really do about it um what do you have to say to that Ed? without looking at the individual case i'm not able to comment Okay. Um, Anil makes a, a, a point here about why the police can't set up a dedicated hotline for people to report catalytic crime, uh, converted crime as it happens. So I, I must admit, I don't see there being a need for this. Uh, a police hotline for people to report that as it happens, um, would it be better to ring 999 for us to then be able to uh, log it, attend it uh, and go? So we already have a hotline in regards to the emergency uh, phone number. Um, however, to set up a specific hotline, um, I wouldn't suggest the amounts that we are seeing per day across uh, Northwest um, would really require a hotline to be able to do that. Okay, I think 999 is probably the first point of call. Um, although, um, in my own experience with the incident that I witnessed when I called the police, they arrived in 10 minutes. Um, so obviously the criminals were long gone. 
Um, but a police car did in the end arrive, but I had to flag them down because they didn't know which location we were in. So I think, you know, residents should definitely utilize 999 um, to try and report some of these uh, crimes. Um, I'm, uh, Luke Wilson asks about the council training staff to support the police in their marking operations. I believe we have um, council staff who attend the marking days with the police um, at the locations once they're advertised. Um, but also, as I stated at the start, and also Ed mentioned that we're trying to roll out more marking sessions so more cars can be marked across the borough and hopefully um, we can advertise what those locations will be and, and where the marking sessions will take place. Um, Minesh Patani asks, how many unreported car thefts do the police investigate? I feel so many don't report them. I think the, the answer's in the question there. If we're not reporting them, then we can't investigate them, so not um, zero. Okay. Uh, Linda asks, how do you actually know if you've been a victim of a catalytic converter theft without seeing them directly? Will the vehicle work? I believe that it will still work. However, there will be some significant uh, amounts of smoke or noise extra that will be making. If you've ever had a, a vehicle that's had a, a blown exhaust, I imagine it will sound very similar to that, very loud. Okay, so people need to watch out for exhaust um, when they turn the car you, on. You'd be able to identify that there's something wrong with your vehicle. If you're listening to the engine, listening to the exhaust, it'll be seem, something will seem out of place. Okay. Anil asks, what do you feel is the one key challenge that is making it difficult for the police to catch these criminals? And what do you feel we as residents can do to better assist? Um, the, the time that it takes, it's such a quick uh, random uh, attack on the vehicle uh, in that it takes uh, literally seconds for them to be there, be gone again. Uh, and one of the key things, challenges for us is making sure that we have that information coming in, uh, which again feeds into the bit of what can the public do to assist us in regards to that. Report anything that you think that's out, uh, suspicious. Um, don't uh, don't leave it until it's too late. If you don't feel it's an emergency, ring 101 um, and just make sure that we can build up this, uh, this intelligence picture around it. That's probably the best way that we were going to be able to uh, deal with this. Okay, and I guess that fits into the next question from Jasu is, um, she says that in her neighborhood, in her area in Stanmore, lots of people are posting videos about um, this crime when it's happening. Um, does this not help when tra to trace criminals, um, these videos that, they, that residents take? Yes, if we're being made aware of these videos, yes, they would be uh, helpful, just the same as uh, we're, we're talking about the CCTV. I mean, um, having people who have been videoed on their cameras, depending on the, the quality of the image and what we can see. Yes, it's all part of an investigation. And yes, that would be helpful. And but just, to, just to be don't... clear, sorry, just to be clear, um, obviously residents might be posting this to social media. So how would they be able to send it into the police? Is there like a dedicated email address or a link that they can send this information through to? Contact their local safe neighborhoods team, make them aware of it, send that through to them, and then we'll be able to look at it further there. Okay, and how do people get their information of their um, local neighbourhood teams? They can contact us through the Metropolitan Police website, enter your uh, postcode in there, it'll bring up which is your, uh, your safe neighbourhood team. Okay, great. Um, what I'll do is I'll also link that in some of that stuff um, onto my Facebook page um, so that those people who are attending this can also go back to that and refer to it. Um, Maureen asks, um, do they take catalytic converters from the rear or side of cars? Generally, they would go from the side and then underneath the vehicle. Okay. Terry asks, how does marking work um, to help catch these, well, he's used the word low lives, but I'd say criminals. So generally, you would not be able to trace, if we found uh, somebody with a catalytic converter on them, we would not necessarily be able to trace that back to a victim. Uh, and even if they had that on them, then we would not be able to convict them. Should we be able to find them and we're then able to trace them through this, um, this scheme, we are then able to connect a victim up with a criminal and then for bring them to justice. So 
just to get this right. So once someone's catalytic converter is marked, that's like an invisible sort of line on the on the catalytic converter. If that catalytic converter is stolen, you can't necessarily say you catch that criminal with that catalytic converter, say that this catalytic converter co belongs to that individual um, yeah. from that car. But you can say it's been stolen because it has that invisible line on it. We have uh, we have ways of being able to view the the it on there and yes they wouldn't be able to see it that something is marked on there so they wouldn't necessarily know unless they looked at it themselves and then uh, we would be able to trace that back to um say for example if you're you had been a victim counselor we would be able to find um joe blogs on the street with a catalytic converter we do a scan of it we're able to find that identify it back to yourself uh, and then we're able to connect the the crime up to the criminal that we've caught okay Jeffrey asks, are there any uh, are any of the wire protectors fitted to cars of any use and can they be cut through? Right, I don't know uh, enough in regards to the, what the wire protectors are to be able to comment. It's really difficult, isn't this? Because you, you need to become like a, a an expert in, in cars, really, or on some of the ways to keep your car safe. Um, so another question from Terry here. Um, what has actually happened to these criminals after they've been arrested? I'm not able to comment in regards to current uh, investigations. Okay. Um, Minal Shah says um, she doesn't think there's been a decrease in this crime in the northwest of Harrow, as we hear of weekly thefts in our small patch. How can you verify the decrease? We can verify that through the, the crime figures that we have. Um, what's been mentioned in one of the other questions is in regards to how do we investigate um, the number of offences that are unreported. Well, if they're being unreported, then they will not show up on these crime figures. So if somebody's saying that the, the, the reality is a lot different to the figures that we have, then my plea is, please, please, please report the crime to us. So then we can start knowing what is the, the reality in regards to it. Okay. Philip asks, um, is this part of a general increase in car crime? We've had many, um, sorry, we've had many car, conver car catalytic converter thefts in our high street in Hatch End, and last week a new Mercedes was stolen. We also have incidents of stealing of cars overnight. We feel under siege. How can you reassure us? So, I mean, there has been a recent in regards to specifically for uh, cars around those areas um, but it, it is a reasonably low increase that we've seen so far um, what I can do to say that reassure you is that we are aware of it we are dealing with I'm putting officers out and about on the streets to be able to uh, deal with this we're trying to come up with different operations uh, not just we've mentioned the property marking scheme quite a lot on here please don't be um, uh, think that that is the only thing that we are doing around this um, to try and prevent this. But this will also try and help to prevent not just the, the vehicles or the catalytic converters being stolen, but also theft from motor vehicles, theft of motor vehicles in particular. Uh, a number of vehicles are stolen by ways of burglary, um, which, again, we have uh, burglary teams out there working to try and prevent this and to try and bring those criminals to justice. Okay. Um, Zahur asks, what sort of a sentence do the criminals get if they are caught? That's something dependent very much on the, the judge and also dependent on the person's um, criminal backgrounds and uh, severity of an offence. Okay. I'm just going to scroll up. There's lots of questions. We've answered 40 questions so far, so we're getting through this really good. Um, there's lots of... Some of the questions here, there are a lot of people very angry um, that the police haven't been able to do much when they are when they have been victims of this crime. I've got one here from Ravi, for example, about an incident on September the 4th, 2000. Um, I don't know if that's 2001 or 2000 and I don't know what 2000 it is, but um, where they had witnesses and CCTV footage. The answer for the, from the police um, was that it was not in the public interest and the party that hit their car just walked away. Now, do you call this justice? Um, I guess you can't really comment on individual cases, but what do you suggest? Because I think there's quite a few of these in, in, the, in, the, in the question box where people have incidents like this where the police response hasn't been great. So what would you 
suggest for residents who have those kinds of situations? What would, what would, what can they do to get some response from the police? Uh, so first of all, if it's an uh, offence that's been reported to us, um, sadly, uh, we have to be real, real, realist in regards to this. We will not get a positive outcome on every single offence. Uh, please do believe that my officers and myself are doing, want to do our very best in regards to every single um, crime that we have reported to us. However, to actually get it to court and bring somebody to justice, there are a number of things that we have to go through which are set down in law. Uh, and unfortunately, if we don't have enough evidence to be able to bring them in front of the court, then we can't do that. Um, that isn't down to any fault in regards to the police uh, or the investigation, uh, but it just might not be that we have the enough to be able to go further forward in regards to that. That doesn't mean that we're not trying our hardest to do that. Um, sorry, can you repeat the rest of the question, please? So, so I, I guess I just want to know, so if I was a resident and I reported a catalytic converter theft to the police, for example, or a car theft or something like that, and the police response was just, you know, a letter or something, and I didn't feel that that was sufficient enough, what could I do as a resident to, to, to do more, for, to ask more from the police? Basically, that's so what again, if the, if you if you're unhappy with the the investigation or level, then please speak to the the officer that's um, identified on there as the OIC. Uh, also, if you are still unhappy, then we do have uh, a number of ways that you can take that further forward. One, if there is a very specific um, failure from the police service, so you'll be able to. Um, um, raise a complaint, which you can do via the Metropolitan Police webpage, uh, speak to the local duty officer or the professional standards unit in regards to making that complaint. Uh, also, there is the victim's right to review, which again, you can get information for this off of the internet in regards to highlighting that to us. And then it would have a fresh pair of eyes look at and uh, see whether the investigation has taken place correctly. Okay. Um... Thank you. And hopefully we can share some of the, the stuff that you've just said um, uh, after this meeting as well, maybe through uh, some of the council's social media pages, just to provide further information for people who might not be happy with some of the responses from the police. Um, further to other questions, Jack asks, does it make a difference if the car has um, a catalytic converter fitted within the engine bay? Yes. That makes a difference. It, yeah, it does make a difference. It's a lot harder to access it. It makes it a lot less appealing for somebody to, to get at. Okay. Lydia asks, can a specific loud alarm be fitted to go off when the thieves try to steal the catalytic converter? Yes, there, there are things that tilt alarms, I believe they're called. So it's the same as uh, a normal alarm really on a car. If you've ever had to have your vehicle towed away due to a flat battery or anything like that, you'll uh, hear the car alarm going off once it's being lifted up. Okay, I'm going to be a bit more picky uh, with the questions because we don't have that much time, but we've uh, we've answered 50 questions, which is really good. Um, Daniel asks, which other police forces have had success with strategies to reduce catalytic converter theft and what can we learn from them? That's something that we're, we're speaking to the College of Police and also the surrounding uh, home counties to discuss whether they're having similar issues. I don't have the answer for you right now, but it is something that we're looking at uh, because we often find that there's um, there's ways being done elsewhere, uh, and if we use a collective mindset to try and come up with these solutions, then uh, there will be somebody somewhere who's had success, and we can try that. It doesn't mean they'll necessarily work in our area, but it's always worth trying to uh, solve these uh, crimes. Okay, great. Dagsha asks, can they retarget you? There's no evidence that I've seen that they, they are retargeting you, but yes, they could do um, if they leave it a while to make sure that you have had a catalytic converter refitted. Okay. Stephen asks, how many patrol cars do you send out at peak times uh, to try and catch these criminals? So at the moment, I, I, on the Safe Neighbours team, we don't have patrol cars. My officers are generally out and about on foot. Uh, so it would depend very much on the, our uh, capabilities at the time. Uh, but I would look to the, the local Safe Neighbourhoods team to start with. If you're asking a general question in regards to how many are put out by the response team, I'm afraid I don't know off the top of our head. It, we have uh, minimum numbers that we put out, but that doesn't necessarily mean that, that those minimum numbers would equate to how many cars we have at the time. Okay. I've got a question here from Paul about who is buying and melting this metal. Um, and he says that there was a problem on the railway with copper and it seemed to get solved quickly. 
if anybody knows, please tell me. That's one of the uh, lines of inquiry that we'd like to solve, but taking out that, that next level in regards to the dealing around these. But I uh, don't believe it's anybody locally from our investigations. Um, but yeah, if you do have any information in regards to that, please uh, contact us or through Crime Stoppers. Great. Um, I guess this question also follows on from that. Um, how closely are the police working with scrap metal dealers? We, we regularly do quite a lot of um, contact with them, uh, the council as well, I believe. Uh, and it's not just around catalytic converters, but it could be around a, any number of offences that we've had <laughs> already in regards to the railways there. Um, that's often been a, uh, an issue with theft of wire, also theft of lead. Um, they're going somewhere, so they're one of our first places to go to. Great. Brian asks, are thefts more likely to be planned in advance or opportunistic, i.e. just criminals on the lookout? From uh, everything that we've seen, the evidence is pointing towards opportunistic. Okay. Alan asks, as there is um, a pattern to the way they operate, do we talk about an organised or mafia type of crime? We do believe that it is probably an organised crime network that is dealing with this, yes. Okay. Um, let me see what other questions we have here. We've got quite a lot of questions. Um, Karen asks, how many gangs appear to be operating at this time? Are there any descriptions of the suspects and their vehicles? I don't have that information at the moment. That's, uh, that's something that we're trying to find ourselves, whether it is just one gang or whether there are numbers of them. So Anne's put a comment here saying that the chief inspector says he can't have success in every single case, but earlier he said that they have not caught anybody. The criminals caught so far were in another area. Um, I guess, you know, some of the, so I, I guess the, I'm feeling some of the frustration um, through these, these questions in trying to catch these criminals. And we've already talked about how sometimes that's really difficult because if they're operating as organized crime gangs, um, and they're in stolen vehicles, what more can the police do, I guess, to try and reassure residents that they're doing everything they can to try and catch these criminals within the Harrow area? So one of the parts of my plans around uh, not just Harrow, but also the rest of the North West Brenton and uh, Barnet as well, is to make sure that we have a positive uh, communication strategy set up to make sure that one, you've already mentioned in there, about the descriptions that are, are coming in, make sure that we're putting those out so people can be aware. We're also using things such as the uh, My Neighbourhood Owl to make sure that we put out the information, not just on uh, catalytic, you know, catalytic converters, but a number of different offense, uh, offences. We'll also look to um, utilise our networks within the Neighbourhood Watch to make sure we're passing that information out, but also to try and reassure the public that uh, we are doing a number of uh, initiatives out there. So we'll use utilize social media to show what we are doing when we can, because obviously some of the, uh, you, you mentioned some of the tactics that are open to us already from uh, the members of the public. We're not going to uh, be out there openly saying what we are doing at that particular time, because we're trying to catch criminals. Um, some of the frustrations there is the fact that we've not been able to um, catch the people who have committed these offenses on Harrow uh, at the moment. Um, yeah, I fully accept that, but we are working on that. Um, and part of that will be some of those more um, undercover policing operations to be able to try and tackle that. Just to follow up on this, um, I guess, because this is not just a Harrow area issue, this is a nationwide, if it's organized crime, I'm sure that these gangs operate in different areas across the country, not just in London. Um, what is the, do, have the police been given any extra funding to try and tackle this crime or no. not? There's no so, extra funding. So you're crime. just using capacity and resource you already have to try and deal with this issue? Yes. Okay, and that I'm assuming makes it much more difficult as well. Based it does because there's a number of different priorities. I, th I think if, uh, if we're, uh, if you ask most people out and about there, if uh, which should be a priority to police, should it be the person who is being assaulted and stabbed in the street or should it be a, a car being uh, broken into? 
uh, I think it's the person's life would take the priority over that. So with a finite number of resources, we would have to prioritise that over the uh, the theft of uh, catalytic converters. It doesn't mean that we're not taking it seriously, uh, but I'd much rather save a life than um, than stop a car being broken into, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, we're sort of coming to the end. I'm going to take a, a last few questions um, before we wrap up. Um, da Dara asks, can off-the-market catalytic converters be marked? Uh, I believe that that's a yes. So I'm assuming from what you're saying by off-the-market is one that maybe you've purchased from, say, uh, a, a non Let's mention a, a couple of the vehicles mentioned there. Obviously, there are other vehicle makes available should you wish to buy them, such as BMW uh, and Audi. I'm assuming you're not buying one of theirs. You're buying something else to replace one. Yes, of course, that could be marked. It's uh, fitted on there. We can still mark that. Okay, that's really good. Um, Bruce asks, um, can we see a list of the vehicles, makes and models that have been attacked most? Owners need to make an economic decision about protection uh, as cages are expensive. Um, some of them cost £100. Um, the the vehicles that we um, were put up in the slides uh, that have been targeted within the last 28 days, um, I'll read them out if uh, Helen's not able to re-put the slides up. Um, the top three was BMW, Honda and Lexus. Okay, BMW, Honda and Lexus. Um, Fez asks a really important question. Um, once, if you've had your catalytic converter stolen from your car, is it legal to drive your car to a garage to get it fixed? Uh, yes. Okay. If you're driving directly there and not driving around for, say, a week or so afterwards. But also, it'd be much more difficult for you to drive your car anyway if you have your catalytic converter stolen. Um, Luckily, I've never been a, a victim of this. However, my understanding of it is that it probably... Um, be rather loud and annoying. Okay. Um, Simon asks, um, can putting up a reward entice petty criminals to come forward with necessary intelligence needed by the police around catalytic converter or vehicle theft? Uh, in regards to putting up a reward for, by members of the public and others for people to come forward with uh, a an item that has been stolen. For example, uh, please can the person return my um, my catalytic converter? No questions asked and I'll give you 100 quid. That's illegal to do that. However, um, through various schemes with the regards to uh, covert intelligence, I do believe that there is uh, potential uh, for rewards in regards to information being put forward to crime stoppers um, that does result in the positive conviction of people. Okay. Um, Stephen makes this point about um, that electric car nozzles are now being stolen um, whilst they are being charged. Do we have any information on this? No, I don't have any information about that. Okay. I guess what I would suggest is for people to report it so that there is information created um, for the police by this. Um, no man asks, most cars don't fit in a garage. Parking in a well-lit area would help the thieves. Is there anything we can do? Parking in a, uh, a well-lit area is more preferable to parking in a dark area. Um, I understand that you're saying that it helps the thieves because they're not able to see what they're doing, but equally it makes them more vulnerable to people being able to capture who they are and to be seen. Uh, down a dark alleyway, for example, nobody can see them, nothing will be seen, you'll just hear a noise and it'll be gone. And then we won't have any information at all to be able to go on. Um, I appreciate what you're saying in regards to newly built homes. They do seem to have smaller garages. Um, there's not much that I can really advise in regards to that. Um, other information, uh, other advice that I could be able to give you uh, is make sure that you're parked in a, an area that is covered by CCTV. It's, again, something that will try and prevent uh, areas. Also, try and park in a gated area if you have an access road around the, the rear of the premises that has gates. Uh, anything that will try and slow it down, make it more of a, a problem for suspects to try and come and steal that vehicle or steal that part of the vehicle. Okay. Last question from Alan. How serious and how high up is this being taken by the police, assuming you are dealing with all kinds of other crimes? Uh, as already mentioned, um, I think that violence and anything that would be a threat to life is treated at a, a higher level 
quite rightly in regards to uh, the loss of properties. Um, it is being taken seriously. I do have officers looking at it and making sure that we do come up with a way of one, trying to reassure you, but also try and uh, prevent people from being victims and to try and catch those people. Okay, thank you very much. We've managed to answer all the questions that were put to us. Um, that's nearly 77 questions altogether. We've had lots of people attend um, this. Thank you very much to Chief Inspector Ed Bilden for being with us. And thank you so much for all of you for being here and asking these questions. I know this is an issue that will continuously be ongoing. Um, we wanted to do this through a webinar because I know how important it is um, to try and get some information out there. Um, but hopefully in the future, we can do one in person um, where people can come together and actually um, air out some of the, the grievances um, that you guys have, because I can feel it through the screen and I know that it would be better to also have this discussion in person. So I commit both of us, Ed, and I hope you don't mind, to an in-person meeting with residents to discuss this. Um, and we can actually uh, bring back an updated presentation to people about some of the things that have worked and maybe some of the things that aren't working. But um, last note, encourage Absolutely. everyone to please report, report it to the police when it happens and get your evidence in through your videos and your photos and make sure that you report it to, um, so you get your crime number so you can report it to your insurance company um, so that they, they are aware to. Um, and um, I think it's really important to understand that it is legal for you to drive your car if your catalytic converter is stolen to the garage to get it fixed. But in order to prevent that from happening, please come to the marking phase that we advertise with the police um, to get your catalytic converters marked up or invest in one of those boxes that Ed was talking about earlier um, to try and prevent or, or prolong um, this. Um, so thank you so much everyone for being with us and I hope that that has been helpful. Hopefully we will see you again um, to discuss um, a bit more of this. Um, but if you have any other questions or um, views, you can always email me. My email address is available on the Harrow Council website. Um, and I'm Councillor Paymana Assad, and that was Ed Chief Inspector Ed Belden. Thank you so much, everyone, for being with us. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye.